let's talk about this new moon in Leo because there is a lot more going on with it than I expected. Hola my beautiful lotus flowers, welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you're into nerding out on everything astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation, this is a community for you. Today's video is all about summarizing the general energy of the new moon in Leo. I just want you to keep in mind that I will not be going over all of the current planetary transits because that is a lot. But I will be going over the transits and the energies that are relevant to the moon directly at the time of the new moon in Leo. I'm going to start the video by talking about a general summary of what a new moon in Leo signifies energetically. Then we're going to move into talking about the transits that are currently relevant to that new moon and how that energy is affecting the way that we may feel. We're going to finish off the video by talking about my general summary and conclusion and some guidance for you during this time because you're probably going to need it. There's a lot of energy going on. And if you're not sure what the new moon tends to signify for us and you want more information on the moon phases, you can go back and watch this video because I will not be covering that here okay so that link will be in the description and there will be a little link right here for you in case you want to go watch that first because it may make this video make way more sense let's start off by talking about what the new moon in leo's general energy will be overall new moon signify new beginnings a new start to the lunar energy and allows us to start making progress towards our manifestations. It's a time to really set intentions on things that we are working towards, things that we desire, so on and so forth. And then we have the new moon in the sign of Leo. Leo, if you're not familiar with this sign, is actually a fixed fire sign and the symbol is the lion. And this is very important to keep in mind because it plays into the energy that is present at the time. With the new moon being in a fire sign like Leo, especially a fire sign that's known for being so bold, expressive, and creative, we're probably going to have a lot of these types of emotions come to the surface. Our emotions may feel more passionate and this will channel itself differently for everybody so again remember this is a general reading and it is not specific to any certain sign so this energy that i'm talking about may channel itself differently depending on your own chart and especially your own sun and moon sign but overall the emotions right now within everybody are probably becoming a lot more passionate or you feel a bit more bold a bit more expressive of the things that you usually wouldn't so this is really a time where that goes hand in hand with starting to manifest our desires it goes hand in hand with us trying to bring things to fruition leo is a very decadent royal zodiac sign and they want generally they tend to want everything that they desire they really and because of that that really contributes to their drive and because they're a fixed fire sign the fire brings the passion the fixed modality means they tend to be more stubborn and this is a good thing when it comes to going after what you want so they really want to go after what they want they want to obtain the things that they desire because they feel that they deserve that they feel they are worthy of that so this is great manifestation energy because you may be feeling like why have I been settling I am worthy of way more and that is that Leo energy coming into play and this is amazing positive energy to channel into going towards the things you want to manifest the goals that you want to achieve but <laughs> but but despite all that it may not feel so positive and we will talk about all the other transits that are coming in during this time and kind of interrupting or it may seem like it's challenging that energy. So let's go ahead and talk about the transits. First, let's talk about the moon being conjunct Mercury right now, which means that it is in close proximity with Mercury because they are actually both in the sign of Leo right now. Both the moon and the Mercury are in Leo, so they're right next to each other. If you're not familiar with what a conjunction is, it's basically when two planets are very close to each other. And I will also have a little definition posted here so you can reference that and even jot it down if you need to. But two planets are very close to each other within the same sign 99.9% .9 of the time. 
and they are going to be working very closely energetically because of the fact that they're so near each other and in the same sign. With the moon conjunct Mercury, we have a lot of energy coming into play when it comes to our communication because Mercury is a planet of communication, intellect, mental processes, technology, etc. So with that in mind, when we have the moon and Mercury working directly together and so closely together, our minds and our hearts are working very closely. So what this means is that those passionate or fiery emotions that are all coming to the surface during this new moon for you, you may feel a huge urge to communicate it. You're not just feeling it, but because of Mercury being so strongly present in this energy, you have a strong urge to communicate it, maybe even lash out, maybe become emotional, argue your point, etc. Things you wouldn't normally do to express those emotions that you tend to suppress. Or, depending on the way it channels for you, it may feel even more difficult at this time for you to communicate those emotions. Even though they're burning inside of you and you're feeling fed up or whatever it is, it may be really hard for you to voice it because of this Mercury energy and the way it may channel for you. Layering on to the fact that the Moon is conjunct Mercury right now, we also have Mercury quincux with Neptune and Pluto. And again, I'll leave a little definition right here if you don't know what a quincux is, but <laughs> it's a tongue twister though, quincux. I can never say it completely correct. But anyways, so we have two extremely deep planets. Some of the deepest planets to dive into in astrology are Neptune and Pluto for sure. They are planets that are just very mystic and dreamy and you get caught in the dreamy depths of Neptune or the illusionary depths of Neptune. And then you have Pluto, which is the planet of things that are more dark and mysterious. So we have these two planets working closely with Mercury and potentially getting in the way of the Mercury energy as well. So if you are feeling that there is difficulty in your communication right now and you're having an even harder time communicating your feelings with Mercury so close to the moon, then most likely it's because of this Neptune and Plutonian energy that is coming into play with Mercury in which Mercury is directly then interacting with the moon and affecting the way that we feel. So the way that Mercury quincunx Neptune and Pluto affects us potentially with this new moon is the fact that Neptune is the healing planet connected to Pisces, which is considered one of the healers of the Zodiac. So what this means is that you, in order to really truly express yourself the way that you feel you need to, the way that you need to in order to move forward with your life, whatever that may be through relationships or career, financially, whatever it is that this is relevant to in your life, in order to move forward, you may need to express yourself and Mercury is pushing you to do that. But the problem is with Neptune and Pluto in play, they're pointing at a lot of deeper, darker secrets or emotions or depths that you just have not explored within yourself that are potentially coming to the surface. And those things need to be mended and healed before you can correctly or positively channel that Mercury energy into the physical realm, into what you desire and moving towards your manifestations. So if you have certain things that you have been working towards and you are planning to set the intention and the manifestation on this new moon for that thing, but you're kind of feeling like it just never happens and you're like, I'm worthy of it though. Like I deserve it. I know I deserve it. And you don't know why you can't seem to move forward. You need to look really deep because Neptune and Pluto with Mercury are bringing these things to your mental forefront. They're bringing all of these things that you need to heal, all these things that you need to mend and come to peace with inside of you. They're bringing it to the forefront of your conscience through Mercury. So you need to pay attention to that at this time because in order to move forward and actually make those manifestations happen, those deep rooted issues or negative thoughts or whatever it is inside of you that's holding you back, they're coming to the surface and you need to recognize them, honor them, and somehow work towards healing them. So maybe with this new moon, you can work and do some healing practices and set the intention to heal yourself 
don't focus so much on when we manifest we focus so much on manifesting physical things becoming a better like you know version of ourselves and everything but we focus so much on the physical realm of that that we forget that we should manifest our own healing and whatnot too so neptune and pluto are bringing these deeper darker secrets of ourselves that we may never want to face but this new moon is bringing that energy up and forcing us to potentially face these things. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure that you don't forget to leave a comment down below talking about how you felt during this new moon and if this video is helping you as well. And be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so other people can see this video just like you who want to know more about the new moon. The next major aspect that we have to take into account is the fact that the moon is opposite Saturn right now, which means they are directly across from each other in the zodiac chart, in the zodiac wheel. Saturn is the other planet that is extremely deep and complex when it comes to astrology. Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto are by far the most complex and I guess mysterious planets of astrology. You can do years and years and years of study on them and discover so many things about them. They're, they're very, very interesting planets and having all three of them so strongly in play directly with this moon is bringing up a lot of potentially difficult emotions and mental thoughts and everything to the surface, which is so insane because Leo tends to be seen as such a positive sign. It's associated with the sun card, which is right behind me, the sun tarot card, because it's associated with positivity, optimism, making things happen, manifesting, celebration, etc. So to have that planet be where the moon's at, but have all these aspects with the darker, complex planets coming into play is bringing a lot of difficult things to the surface. And the way that moon opposition Saturn is coming into play is you may be feeling even more restricted than usual. You may be feeling very, very lonely for some reason. And even though self-expression is at the forefront of our emotions right now because of Mercury and the moon being in Leo, we have Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto coming into play. And Saturn specifically may be, we may be feeling those things come to the surface and boiling, but Saturn is placing restrictions on ourselves. However, those restrictions may be showing up for you in terms of those emotions. Just like how I mentioned with Neptune and Pluto that there may be deeper rooted issues that you haven't dealt with or haven't tried to heal that are coming up at this time, Saturn is further bringing up any limiting beliefs, any social constructs or any insecurities, anything that has played into your psyche that has made you, that has held you back and restricted you from manifesting what you want and from moving forward in your life positively, those may be coming to the surface right now too. But that is not all. We also have, on top of the moon opposition Saturn, we have moon squaring Uranus right now as well, which is even more insane. So we literally have all these planets bringing up restrictions and limiting beliefs and deeper emotions and complexities. But then we have Uranus, which is trying even harder all at the same time to break us out of those boundaries we've placed upon ourselves. Uranus is the planet of basically, dest not destruction, but destroying societal boundaries and breaking down structures and breaking things down and starting anew and bringing original things to the surface, new unique perspectives and whatnot to the surface. So to have this planet at play is super interesting. The reason this aspect is even more important is because Saturn is also square Uranus right now. So we have the moon squaring Uranus and we have Saturn squaring Uranus, but the moon and Saturn are opposite each other as well. So we have one big aspect forming between these three separate aspects to form something called a T-square. And a T-square is generally seen as a little bit more of a challenging aspect, but the planet that is highlighted in this situation because it's the planet that's being aspected by the two other planets is Uranus. So this is bringing Uranian energy to the forefront of this new moon as well. Because we have Saturn, which is generally the planet of traditions and 
restrictions and boundaries and whatnot. Squaring the planet that is meant to break all of that down, we have two opposing energies coming head to head once again. And we have seen a lot of themes with Saturn and Uranus the past year when it comes to planetary transits. So they're just going head to head once again with this new moon. Bringing the new moon into this equation with Saturn opposing Uranus and all three of them interacting with each other basically just means that people are fed up. People are fed up. You personally are probably fed up with things that you have been dealing with, with things that you have allowed to hold you back. This is a breaking point for so many people and it has been a breaking point because the this planetary energy has been present, but it's just becoming a lot more personal with the new moon highlighting our own emotions because we have seen this happen collectively. We've seen people breaking out of boundaries and trying to do new things and accepting new things and being more unique in their life paths. We have seen this. This has been a very Uranus themed time in every person's life overall. But now with the new moon, with these types of new moons happening with these aspects, especially directly interacting with this aspect, it's even stronger right now and it's more deeply connected to our own personal emotions than ever before, especially because again, Leo tells us that we deserve more. We're worthy of more. It makes us feel like, you know, we haven't been living the life that we deserve or it's pushing us even more to live the life that we feel we deserve. So everyone is fed up. But Neptune, Pluto and Saturn are saying, hey, you may be fed up though, but if you're not able to accept the truth, if you're not ready to accept the truth about what you need to work on, then you're going to be stuck. All right, so now that we talked about all the major transits going into play with each other, now I'm going to give a little summary conclusion of what all of this means. So, so that way you have something to wrap your head around in case all of this confused you. Overall, there's a huge theme of potential emotional impulsivity and rebellion in people's personal lives during the time of this new moon and during this time in general. Although I don't believe in ruling out certain energies in astrology as completely negative or completely positive because they can channel themselves as super positive or super negative depending on how you use the energies this energy is can be very overwhelming it can feel very strong it's like the universe is giving you a massive shove and if you're not ready if you're not bracing yourself for it then that shove might send you off the cliff you know you may end up saying things that you regret, doing things that you regret because you're being too reckless. There's a lot of potential reckless energy. You do deserve more. Leo is right in calling you to do what you deserve, to live the life that you want. And there's nothing wrong with that calling and feeling like it's time to make a change. But because we have so many very strong planets at play, bringing up some very, very deep complex energy within everybody, then it can easily turn into something that actually puts you back instead of taking steps forward. So the real power in being aware of this energy is the fact that you won't allow it to take, to make you take any steps back in your life. You'll use it to move yourself forward, but you just have to be ready for it. And the biggest thing that I think you have to be ready for in this new moon is to face the truth about yourself. We all have ugly truths that we don't want to face. And Neptune, Pluto, and Saturn are going to be amazing at making you face those, especially because they are all interacting with the moon. They are all interacting with our emotions right now. Literally, the moon is the emotional nature behind the way that we live. So all these planets are literally screaming at you, giving you the answer to what you need to work on, where you need to heal, where you need to create positive change. And if you pay attention to it, if you slow down, and I highly recommend during this time, this new moon, to do a lot of healing practices. The biggest practices I recommend for this new moon are healing practices. So if you're going to do a new moon ritual, do something that is nurturing to you and allow yourself to slow down and listen. I would say for this new moon, instead of focusing more so on, you know, you can do self-care, of course, but don't just focus on like self-care really focus on maybe like journaling journaling about the things you've been feeling because this energy is going to be present and it probably already has been present for you 
So journal about the things you've been feeling, let it all out in some way. And journaling also gives you a physical thing to look at to help you make sense of everything you've been feeling. And once you journal it and get it out, you can look at X, Y, and Z and go, okay, these are the things I'm struggling with. These are the things that once I work on those and heal those, it's gonna allow me to move forward positively. Don't neglect whatever you do. Don't neglect the things you feel and don't allow them to consume you. Don't allow them to consume you. Only allow them to work hand in hand with you because they are speaking to you for a reason. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please, again, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell because it helps me reach so many more people just like you. And if you want more content, you can head over to the LaBlue Lotus Facebook community where we talk more about using astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation. Link will be in the description. But for a more personal side of the journey here on YouTube, you can go to my Instagram Instagram to see more of my personal life and you can also watch these videos until I release a new one to learn even more about your astrological and spiritual journey. Until I see you next time, thank you so much. Adios!